Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about plants. Topic for the day is going to be response to light. So let me get you your objectives, and we'll go ahead and get going. Two things I need you to know or be able to do by the end of this video. First one is to describe the role of phytochromes in the plant response to life, and the second is to explain each of the major plant responses to light. So that's what we've got. Let's go ahead and get on into it today. So before we actually get into talking about how plants respond to light, we need to talk about the mechanism by which plants respond to light. Plants have got these interesting protein complexes in them called phytochromes, and scientists have long known that plants respond to different colors of light, and that's called an action spectrum. So for example, let's say we have the whole spectrum of visible light laid out here. Scientists have done a lot of work to show that plants respond best to light in the red end of the spectrum and in the blue end of the spectrum. They could care less about the colors of light that are in between. Actually, this is why plants are green, because these colors of light are reflected back to our eyes, so we see green while the red and the blue are actually picked up. Um, plants have got a class of receptors called blue light receptors, but we're not going to worry much about them today. We're going to concern ourselves mostly with phytochromes. So phytochromes are these protein complexes. They've got two units in them. They've got a chromophore. This is the part that is responsible for sensing the wavelength of light that is coming into them. And then they've got an area that is responsible for kinase activity. This would be, you know, responsible for turning other proteins on or off. So as we talk about all this stuff with light and light reception and light response in plants today, these phytochromes are the business end of the deal. Another thing that you need to know about phytochromes is that they shift form in response to the color of light that they are receiving. It seems that they are most sensitive to light in the red and far red end of the spectrum. We are able to see red light. Far red light is kind of at the edge of what we're able to see. So um, phytochromes shift between two positions. They've got one shape or one conformation when they hit or get hit by red light, and they've got another shape or conformation when they get hit by far red light. And this shifting between one form and the other is responsible for some of the responses that we're going to talk about today. So recognize that these phytochromes are sensitive enough to distinguish between two different wavelengths of light, and they have a corresponding response to those different wavelengths of light. So I'm just going to go ahead and start going through some behaviors or responses that have been observed in plants, and I'll talk a little bit about how they happen, and then that'll be the end of the day. So first one is seed germination. Scientists have found that seeds will not germinate unless they have been exposed to red light. So you can take a seed, soak it in water all day, it gets nice and ready to go, but there are some seeds that that's not enough. Once that seed has been hit with red light, it will go ahead and germinate and start growing. Now scientists found, and this is very interesting, this behavior is seen in a lot of different plant responses. If you hit the seeds with varying colors of light, so let's say you hit them with red light, and then you hit them with far red light, and then red light again, and then far red light, and you got these seeds all confused, they respond to whatever the last pulse of light was. So if you were to hit seeds that were ready to germinate with red light, and then far red light, they wouldn't germinate, they would stay closed up. However, if you hit them with red, far red, red, they would go ahead and germinate. Kind of a funny behavior that plants have, but they respond to the last color of light that they were exposed to. So seed germination is one of our light regulated responses. Another one is shade avoidance. Obviously, if you are a tree, when there is sunlight available to you, you're being struck by light, you want to go ahead and put energy into growth. However, if you are being shaded, you don't want to waste your energy on growing. So again, we are dealing with this red, far red shift, and <clears throat> the ratio of red or far red phytochromes in a tree or another plant will let it know whether it needs to put energy into growing bigger, bigger and bushier or whether it needs to chill for a little bit and kind of relax. Now, I would try to tell you whether it's red or far red that makes it grow faster, but I'd just be pulling it off the top of my head, so I'm not going to make that leap. I'm just going to say that the ratio of one to the other is what causes trees and some plants to allocate their resources differently in response to shade. Now, with regard to AP biology and a lot of stuff that they talk about with plants, the next couple behaviors I'm going to talk about are things that are 
talked about more than the shade avoidance and the seed germination. Before we talk about that other stuff, though, you need to understand the idea of a circadian rhythm. A circadian rhythm is any regular, mostly day-long cycle in living organisms. We have them. That is our wake-sleep cycle. Bugs, um, birds, small mammals, fish, all of these things have been shown to have regular 24-hour cycles that are seem to be internally controlled. Scientists have found that plants often have these um, cycles too. There are a lot of different kind of plants that have different shapes. So at night, you can see there on the right, this plant kind of droops down, its leaves and flowers droop down, and then in the daytime, they'll raise back up. Now, scientists have done a lot of experiments that have shown that even if you keep certain plants in light all the time or in dark all the time, they will still go through that 24-hour cycle of the leaves drooping down and then coming back up. They might get a little bit off sync. So where a plant would normally be synchronized and have that cycle happen in 24 hours in conjunction with day and night, if they are kept in the light all the time or in the dark all the time, their cycle might move to 21 or 26 hours or something like that. But they'll still show this up and down uh, cycle. The sun and the rising of the sun, setting of the sun, day length, night length, those seem to help plants set their clocks so that they are synchronized with day and light. But just know circadian rhythm is that regular occurrence that happens on a daily basis. To finish that idea out, there is a, I guess, a way of dividing plants into two categories, and that is called photoperiodism. And there's some diagrams going on here that I kind of want to illustrate and show you. Um, all plants can be divided into, no, scratch that. Plants can be divided into three categories. You have got short day, otherwise known as long night plants. You've got long day, short night plants, and then you have got neutral plants. We're not gonna worry about the neutral plants because we're talking about response to light. So in a short day slash long night plant, these are plants that will not flower unless the night is a certain length. There's this dotted line across here called the critical length. That is the length that day or night needs to cross in order for these plants to respond. So you can look here at this diagram and see that if the days are too long, if the day passes that critical length or if the night does not cra cross that, pa that critical point, our plants will not flower. If the night crosses that critical length, sweet, our plants get to flower. Now this is really interesting. Um, even if you have the correct length of darkness, but you interrupt that darkness with a flash of light, our poor little flowers get confused and they will not flower. So in order for these flowers to respond, they have to have a very consistent length of darkness. Now, obviously this is one of the ways that plants are able to respond to seasonal changes. Um, unless you're at the equator, your days and nights become longer or shorter based on your season. So that lengthening or shortening of the nighttime period is what controls the flowering response of some plants. In a long day plant slash short night plant, again, the response is based on the length of the night. So right here when we have got a short night, our plants go ahead and flower. So this would be plants that are probably summer plants. If your night passes that critical length, no flowering. Or if your light passes that critical length but is interrupted by a flash of light, you will get flowering. So just recognize that this response again is controlled by those phytochromes. Um, this is a way that plants respond to seasonal changes and it's called photoperiodism. Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. I hope this little primer into plant responses to light was helpful for you. Join us again. Thank you.